Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is a, I guess, a fish documentary, kind of, of how I bred my peppercorn cats. So, a couple months ago, I wish I knew exactly when, I feel like it would have been like five months ago or something, I won one of Bob Kaler's giveaways, and it was a $25 gift card to Dance Fish. And then my sister won the other $25. So she gave her $25 to me, so I had $50 gift certificate to Dance Fish. And most of the Koi Cats at the time were like $10 and up, and I wanted to get at least five of them. And I've had Koi Cats before that, I had some albinos and I had some pandas, but something happened to them and they had passed away. But. I feel like it was a disease, so it's something that I could have prevented. So I wanted more cord cats because there was nothing else on this site that interested me more than the catfish that were on there. So the peppered cord cats were six bucks each, I think. So I got five of them and then shipping. And I think I ended up paying like $17 for them excluding the gift cards. So he sent me seven. And I had, had I had one. So that was one of my motivations for getting more. Is because we got these fish tanks from this guy, I want to say an hour away from us. And one of them was a bow front that was so dirty. And we got bloodfin tetras in them, which are in the angel fish tank now. And there was one peppered cory in them. And I felt bad for the guy, so we quarantined him for a while, I would say a couple weeks. And I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for getting more. So like I said, he sent me seven. So I had eight of them. And I had those for a while. I think two of them ended up dying. I can't remember why. But two of them did pass away, so I have six of them now. And the one that I had originally was short fin, and all the ones that I got from him were long fin, because they're babies and there was a possibility of them being long fin anyways. So I ended up having uh, two females and four males left, and I never really tried to breed them until a couple months ago, when I... I just sat down in front of the tank and I saw how much potential they had and how how fun they were just to watch. Because it's kind of hard to necessarily explain, but like quarry cats, they'll sit down at the bottom and that's what they're supposed to do. Other fish, they remain swimming, as they should. But I think it's so cool how the quarry cats are like sort of lazy, but I also love how they school together. And other fish are like that, but I don't know. I really like corn cats. But as I sat down for the tank, I fed them and I watched them eat a big clump of white worms that I fed them out of one of my cultures. And I thought that that was just so fun to watch them uh, go after the worms. I added some sand in there. Very, very little. Like, barely any sand. And I gave them black worms and sinking wafers and stuff. And I saw them actually like digging in the sand. Uh, all the way up to their eyes, pretty much. And then I fell in love with feeding them. So I just kept feeding them and feeding them. And like I get home from school and I feed them. And before I go to school, I feed them. And you get the idea. Like I fed them like at least four to five times a day. And I felt like I was overfeeding them, and I got really worried. But then, I came home from school, and there was a couple eggs on the glass. And I actually have a short video of the eggs. So I pulled those, the next day I come home from school, and there's like 30 eggs on the glass. And then I got really excited because I was going to get more peppered quarries because I thought that I didn't have enough to breed them. Uh, because groups of six they do good, but groups of ten are even better. And so I was going to get more, but they bred, so now I didn't need to get more. 
and I had been looking for a different type of quarry for a couple months now, so then I got different types of quarries and stuff. But they bred, I pulled their eggs, I put them in this little like, it's a to-go ice cream dish, so it's like that big or so. And I put a catapa leaf in there, not a whole one, just a partial one. And then I also put some airline. I bring an airline to it. And then I start hatching. And then for a couple days, none of them hatched. None of them were continuing to hatch, and I got upset because then I only had a couple more corn cats. But then, when I pulled the cup out one day, I saw that there were a lot of corn cat babies. So I pulled them into this hang on the side breeder box. And I let them grow up a little more, and I fed them microworms. And once they got big enough, and we, the tank was cleared up, I moved them to a 20 high. And I fed them, I've been feeding them like Grindel worms. I fed them only Grindel worms for a while, which was probably not a good idea, but I did it anyway. But I continued to feed them lots and lots of Grindel worms. I fed them probably a couple hundred Grindel worms this morning. I also feed them Dr. Bathalier pellets and then sinking pellets and also this mixture of rapashi, which is rapashi grub pie. Two parts rapashi grub pie to two parts, what's it called? Spawn and grill? There we go. Um, and I've been feeding that to a lot of my corn cats and they seem to really like it. Now all my cory cats are different, so I know that my gold lasers upstairs will eat it, but they prefer other food. They really go after other food more. And then my two species down here, my Schultzai and my peppers, they both go after them. Go after that food like crazy. So that's that. And now they're bigger now. So I have some videos that you're going to see along this video of the babies now. Today is Friday, Christmas Eve. So you'll be seeing this next Thursday. So you'll see this in six days. So they'll be about the same size. And I just fed them a ton of Grindel worms when I took the video. So a lot of them are out and about. I have 12 of them in the 20 gallon drag tank and then I have one little strangler that was left in the main tank. So he's in there with the adults. I have videos of the adults and of the babies that you will see in this video. But that is basically how I bred them. Some other species, every single species breeds a different way. Not saying that there's hundreds of different ways to breed corn cats, there probably is. But there's different spawning triggers that you can do. I know, cool water water changes, cool water, cool water changes, um, heavy feedings of live foods, a dry period, which is where you basically feed them not a whole lot for like nine weeks, and let the water heat up and evaporate. And then all of a sudden you hit them with a cool water, water change, and feed them a bunch of live foods and they should spawn. Well, there's tons and tons of different triggers that you can do for breeding cord cats, but I just bred mine by just feeding them five times a day with a lot of food, which I thought was too much, but it wasn't. It worked for me, so it might work for you. Every single cord cat's different, so you'll just have to try and experiment. Some people have had to knock the pH down to like 5 without it crashing. And some others have had to cool the tank down to 55 degrees. But peppered cory cats are a relatively easy cory cat to breed, opposed to corridor equis or something. But that is my story of how I bred my peppered cory cat. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to. Um, and I hope you all have a great day and a great week. Bye.